In the previous video, we have created our setup project for this simple traffic tutorial. Now, first thing that we will need to do is we will need to create a car prefab that will be able to move towards a point that we give it and take a list of points that it will be able to follow later on. So first, let's start by creating a simple car prefab. Uh, to do this, in the hierarchy, let's right click, let's choose create and let's create an empty game object. Now, first of all, let's reset its inspector using those three dots near the transform component. Let's click those three dots and reset the component. We can select the scene view and click F to focus on this component. And here is our uh, car game object. Now, we are going to choose one of the prefabs from the prefabs folder in the project section. Choose the prefabs, cars, and let's choose this cap car and drag it into our game object. And we can rename this game object to be a car instead of game object. So let's name it car. Okay. And we will have this car. I'm going to disable the gizmos. Uh, and here we can see our car. And what we can do is we can add to this car component since we want the game object, the car prefab itself to be a child of this car. So uh, we will interact with other objects using the car game object, but the prefab itself we will spawn it uh, randomly. So we are going to randomly choose one of the available cars. So to the car game object, let's first add the rigid body since we want to have a movement of some sort that uh, so our car will need to be moving. For our rigid body, let's set the mass to 1, drag to 1, angular drag, let's set it to be 10. Uh, of course, this setup is only for the movement that I have implemented. You can play around with it. Now, for the, uh, we are going to use gravity. And for the constraints, let's extend this. And we do not want to uh, uh, rotate the x-axis and the z-axis. So we're going to freeze those because our terrain is flat and our car will move through the flat terrain. And that is why we have frozen the rotation in the rigid body. Uh, right now, if we press play, our car probably will fall down because it has no collider that will collide with our ground. So let's stop it. And we are going to add a simple collider to our car. So let's add a component here and choose a collider. And we should have different colliders available for us. We are going to use a sphere collider. So let's find it. Great. Here is our sphere collider. And let's edit this collider. You can see that it is pretty big. So we can choose one of the green handles in it uh, when editing the collider. And holding Alt, we should be able to drag it to make it a bit smaller. And what I would like to have is this circle collider that will define where our car is colliding with the ground and since we have locked the rotation it will just prevent the car from falling down. What we can do is drag its center using the sphere collider using the y-axis we can drag a, a, the center of the collider a bit and we can again change the radius to maybe make it a bit smaller something like 0 0.04 or 0 0.03 will be good and let's uh, move the collider a little bit lower something like this so 0.03 on uh, the y value for the center of the collider so now since this is a collider if we press play we should see that our car is now sticking to our ground and that is good enough for our simple simulation let's stop the game now if you want to disable the music you should do it in the audio player the one audio source is for placing building sound and this is the one with the disabled looping and play on awake. And the second one is the uh, one that has play on awake and we can select loop so the sound will loop through the entire game. So you can disable this audio source if you don't want to hear the music. Okay, let's save this uh, project. And one thing that we can use to more quickly iterate through our project is use the new functionality of Unity 2020. If you go to edit, to project settings, and if you select the editor, if you slide it down, there is an experimental feature, uh, which is called uh, Enter Play Mode Settings. And if you choose the Enter Play Mode option and select it, and uh, close the project settings, and if you press play, you should already see the improvement in the speed uh, with which the editor is starting the game. So let me show you again. And now we are playing. So it reduces the time that it takes the editor to load the scripts, but it is uh, it affecting the loading of the static variables 
You can learn more about it by visiting Unity documentation for it. In any case, this will speed up our process of iterating through our uh, implementation of our code. So we have our car and now it has the uh, rigid body and sphere collider. What we would like to add here as well is another collider or rather trigger. So let's close this rigid body setup and sphere collider setup since this is done. Okay, so for now, what we can do to for easier interaction with this, let's drag this car into our prefabs folder. And if we double tap on the car in the prefab folder, we should open up a separate environment to edit our car. And what I would like to do is let's close the rigid body and sphere collider. Let's add here a box collider. This will be useful when we want to detect if our car has entered the intersection. So let's edit this uh, collider and we can again choose the collider handles after clicking the edit collider and let's slide it a bit using alt key so that it fits our car. We can use this uh, handle to change the axis uh, from which we are viewing the car and we can modify the collider just to fit the outline of our car. Okay, we can choose uh, click F to focus on our car and this should be good enough. Uh, make sure that the collider is sticking a bit away from the bonnet because we will be using this collider, make sure that it is set to be trigger when we are uh, entering the intersections. Okay, and that's basically it for our setup. Let's control S to save this car prefab and let's go back using the arrow underneath the hierarchy to go back to our scene view. Now, what we will want to do is add a couple of scripts to our car so that we can first spawn a random car when we press play and second that we can control our car, uh, the movement of it and third we are going to add a script that will control the, that will be responsible for the car AI. So let's start by going into our scripts folder and let's create a new folder here new folder let's call it AI let's double tap on it and we are going to create here a new script so right click create new script and let's call it a car spawner okay let's open this script up in Visual Studio great now for this tutorial I am using Visual Studio IDE and I recommend that you use it as well since I will be using a couple of short keys that allow us to more quickly create methods and you may have difficulties following in a, a different editor if you are not sure how to use the specific editor features. Okay, so car spawner will be a script that will allow us to spawn a random uh, car prefab when we want to spawn our car on our road. So let's delete the start and update and we are going to simply create a public game object uh, field which will be the array and we are going to call it car prefabs. Okay, and what we can do is create a start method and in the start method we are going to uh, call instantiate and we are going to type here a new method called select a car or maybe select a car prefab and this will be a method that we do not have and let's pass as a second parameter transform so we are going to spawn it uh, and we are going to use the uh, car spawner game object transform as the uh, uh, parent for this. Okay, and since we do not have this method, so let's alt enter on it and let's generate this method using the short key. And here we have our method generated. We would want to return not void but game object. And here in this method, we are simply going to randomly select one of the cars from our game object uh, array. So let's create a var random index. And this will be the random value of between 0 and the length of our car prefabs array. So let's type random dot range. And we are going to pass here 0 as the start value and car prefabs dot length as the end value. And this will give us a random index. Now if you have error with this random, alt enter on it and you should see the tips that uh, Visual Studio gives us and we, are want to, we want to be using random equals unity engine dot random and at the top of it, it Visual Studio will automatically create this statement so now we are only using the unity engines random library and what we want to return here in this select a car prefab method is return and we want to return our car prefabs with the index random index okay and that's it Let's set, uh, let's save it using Control S. 
let's go back to Unity. So now what we can do is go to our prefabs folder, select our car and add component here and let's type a car spawner. And now if we open our car prefab and delete our child, so the cap car, and let's save it. So we have saved the prefab without any car prefab model. Now our car in the hierarchy doesn't have any prefab. So we will need to add uh, to the car prefabs array. So let's again select the prefab inside the prefabs folder. So the car prefab, extend the car uh, prefabs uh, array. And what we can do is choose this icon of the lock in the top right corner of inspector. Let's lock it and let's choose the prefabs and the uh, cars. Uh, the cap uh, car will not be very visible since this is the same color as our roads. So I'm going to use the other car prefabs for our uh, setup. Let's select all of this using the shift. You can select all of those and let's drag them into our car prefabs. Let's uh, deselect the lock inside the inspector. And now our car will have the uh, car prefabs array preset. So now if we press play, we should see a random car appearing every time we uh, pl press play. Okay, I think we are going to implement the uh, movement script and the AI script in the next video. If you are enjoying this tutorial so far, please leave a like, leave a comment. It helps me a lot. See you in the next video.